funny shiur. It's going to be some funny things, but not funny shiur, just because we're in Elul. Elul is a time where we're supposed to get our, uh, you know, get closer to our Kadosh Baruch Hu, but how so? The uh, uh, Chachamim say that many people look at Elul as a uh, negative thing. Why? You have Judgment Day. Judgment Day coming up in a month and a half, less than a month and a half. And uh, on Rosh Hashanah, the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah says that every single person gets judged on Rosh Hashanah. How much Parnassah they're going to get, whether they're going to live, they're going to die, they're going to get married, they're going to have kids, all of these different things. So Judgment Day on Rosh Hashanah is a very big deal. So many people look at it, okay, so the month of Elul, it's negative, maybe it's like a whole month of Tisha B'Av, but that's really the wrong way of looking at it. It's the wrong way of looking at it. What are you supposed to look at it as? Imagine a person got Shemeachem a life sentence in jail. He knows he did something wrong, he went to jail. And they told, how long am I going to be here? Forever. That's how long. So, Yossi. Um, how long are you going to be here? Forever. So, Tikanti, Tikanti, So now, the person, he already has the expectation that this is his life. All of these criminals are his friends, all of the uh, bars are his uh, accessories. That's it. One day, somebody comes up to him and says to him, listen, you want to get out of here in a month? What is he going to say? No, of course. So I have a way for you to get out of here in a month. What are you going to do? Every day, you got to wake up at 3.30 in the morning. And you got to go to the guard that's on duty and tell him you're sorry. You didn't mean it. You didn't really know what you were doing. You were stupid. You're young. You made mistakes. I'm sorry. Every day. Now, if the guy says, oh, 3.30 in the morning, no, it's the best time to sleep, 3.30 in the morning. That's what I'm already in the fifth dream. That's what I'm dreaming about, this and that. No, I don't want to wake up at 3.30. Can you make it five? Can you make it six? A person like that deserves to be in jail for the rest of his life. On the other hand, another person says, deal, I'm there. I'm there, I'm going to say I'm sorry every day, 3.30 in the morning, why not? So that's really the opportunity we have on uh, Elul, but it's not really just about waking up early because really, Tamidei Chachamim, people that learn Torah, especially people that learn Torah during the day, during the night, they don't need to wake up for Slichot. This is a, uh, a very good custom for people to do, to do Slichot, but if it's going to interfere with your learning Torah, then you don't need to wake up early in the morning. You can pick up a different time to go to do Slichot. But uh, sometimes people, their entire uh, Judaism is Slichot. The whole year they didn't go to Beknesset, but the Slichot, they like to sing. So people like that, yeah, they should go to Slichot, but they should also go to the rest of the uh, year. People that learn to us seriously, they learn during the day, they learn during the night. Avrechim, if they're going to be bothered with, uh, you know, uh, if they're going to learn less because of Slichot, it's better for them to go to Slichot either during the night or do it once a week or something like that. But either way, the point of Slichot is an opportunity to get closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu because we have Judgment Day. Now the question is, what are we really getting judged for? Now if you look at the Torah, the Torah says Mechalel Shabbat Mot Yumat. Mechalel Shabbat, death penalty. It says that Mechalel Shabbat is considered like an idol worshiper. It says that a person does something like that is terrible, not good. But you guys are all religious. So what is irrelevant to you Mechalel Shabbat? Nothing. Person keeps Shabbat. Person doesn't keep Shabbat, uh, he pretty much has to understand that every second he's alive is a miracle. Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu promised, if he violates Shabbat on purpose, he drives on Shabbat, he watches TV on Shabbat, he does all of these things, then uh, Hashem is going to take his life. But if a person keeps Shabbat, then how is keeping Shabbat going to mean, you know, what, what is that relevant? It's not. On another hand, you see another person, say, uh, if you eat pig. If you eat pig, it's a big sin. If a person doesn't eat pig, because he doesn't eat pig, because he lives in Israel, and well, Hashem, there's a lot of kosher food, it's all delicious, and... It's not relevant then. What is he going to do with the eh, Pig? It's not for me. I don't have to chew off for eating pig. If a person didn't kill anybody, at least not recently, and nobody knows about it, so he doesn't have to do chuva for murder. He doesn't have to do chuva for murder. So he starts looking at it. He's like, wait a minute, I'm religious. What do I have to do chuva for? He starts thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay, Ten Commandments. 
Another God? No, one God. Use God's name in vain, not even sure what that means. No. Uh, idol? No. Well, the Buddha statue, but it's not really mine, I just borrowed it. No. Yeah, you know, all types of things. He does the cheshbon in his mind. I don't have to do tshuva. I have nothing. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't commit adultery. I didn't steal. I didn't, nothing, nothing. He's perfect. He's like, okay, so I look for me his vacation. Is he right or is he wrong? If he was right, then why would the Chachamim make a, uh, uh, an important addition to our prayer every single day to do tachanun? Meaning that every single day we're supposed to say, I'm sorry for a bunch of things none of us think are guilty for. On the other hand, why is there a special month of Elul? Now, if you're going to tell me the special month of Elul is for all of the Chilonim, all of the people that are secular to do tshuva, eh, it's nice to think that, but it's really not. Why? Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu, when he's talking about the Torah, he's not talking to just the Chilonim, he's talking about the Datim also, he's talking to the religious people also, and even more so to the religious people. Because the more you know, the more the obligation is on you. So the question is, what are we supposed to, what are we supposed to work on during this time? So, let's see. The Stipler Gaon, he has a sefer called Chaye Olam. Chaye Olam. And in this sefer, in Amud Lamed Vav, Perek Haf Hei, he says, V'im Yisha Lashoel, Ha'ech Efshar Shedvarim Betelim Mevutalim, Bedotot Ubeshtutot, Itkablu, Etzel Ravot Umilyonim. He says, if a person that asks question, an inquisitive person, Ask, how is it possible that such null and void nonsense gets accepted by so many millions of people? You know, imagine somebody says, uh, you know, that uh, because you don't look a certain way, you should be dead, like the Nazis. Or if they say that, uh, you know, you, uh, if you don't act a certain way, you, you, shouldn't, you don't belong in a certain community. Or if you don't dress a certain way, you don't belong in a certain school. Or if, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you believe in God, but you don't believe in God the same exact way as they do, it, uh, it cancels you out. So a person that, uh, that thinks about this nonsense that's out there today can easily connect to what the stipler is saying. But he's not talking about just things that are... Sometimes you could have an argument for them. He's talking about things that are outright ridiculous, null and void, nonsense. Something like somebody saying, God needs you. Anyone tells you God needs you, that's not God. Maybe it's your mother, maybe it's your cousin needs you, maybe it's your sister needs you, maybe you need yourself. God for sure doesn't need you. If he needs you, he's not God. But there are people that teach this, that God needs you. So this is the type of thought process. Or some people teach God is a man that looks just like you and me, but he has long hair. And he looks like a rock star. And he died, but then he's alive. But he died though. And that allows you to make all the sins in the world because he died. Some people believe this. So this is, for anybody that's normal, this is stupid. But a lot of people believe this stuff. So the stapler asked the question, if a person that's an inquisitive person asks, how could such a thing happen? How could so many people believe such nonsense? How could it be? He says, first you have to know, it doesn't start from nothing. It doesn't just one day the guy decides that he believes in Christianity. One day he wakes up and he believes God needs you. One day he wakes up and he believes in Buddha. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. It all starts how he's raised. What kind of education he gets when he's a little kid. If he goes to a secular school, he's going to get that type of education. If he goes to a modern school, that's the type of education he's going to get. If he's going to go to a, a school that is uh, perfect and uh, excels in, uh, let's say, in mathematics, that's the way his mind is going to be. If he's going to go to a school that excels in Torah, that's the way his mind is going to be. So he says it all has to start with the way the Chinook starts when they're little kids. And usually with, with these uh, uh, fakers, he says, with these uh, 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 these fakers and lies, 
מתחילים באיזו מחוז ללמד ילדים דברים, כאילו בתור דברים משעשעים, ומתאימים לדמיון הילד. They usually start teaching this type of stuff to little kids as, as if it's fun. Oh, this is going to have to stop. I'm oh, sorry. Um... תגיד לו, תביא לי איזה ספר, אני אשים, תיקנתי את זה, אבל תביא איזה משהו שזה יפסיק כבר. אני לא יכול לעשות את זה כל השיר. So, he, uh, he says this all starts where they try to implant the seed on little kids. But how do they do it? They give them little cartoons, or little fun things to do. Oh, let's, let's, let's do some show that looks fun. To make the kids use their imagination, to interest them, to get them to listen to the stories. And little by little, they implant the story that they want inside these types of shows, inside these little books, inside this type of environment. And before you know it, the kid grows up And that belief in whatever they want him to believe in gets stronger and stronger and stronger so that by the time he's already 20, 25 years old, to him, to her, it's, this is it. This is the Emunah, this is what they believe. So now you ask people, listen, do you believe in uh, Santa Claus? Now, if the amount of people that make fun of it wouldn't make fun of it, he would tell you yes. Why? Because that's how you grew up. That's how you grew up. But there's a lot of people that uh, believe in Santa Claus. They just call him a different name. Different types of names, different types of fairy tales that they believe in. Why they grew up this way. Santa!